how do you sustain fire as I round up because the fire comes on you when you gave your heart to Christ that's why all of us here the week we repented we were born in like flame they say prayer we are there they say discipleship we trek there they say so winning we are telling everybody but after one month two months those desires have gone some of you when you gave your heart to Christ you deleted the number of your boyfriend you went to him and told him please you want to take me to her I don't want to see you again the passion was heavy but you couldn't sustain it for one month I tell you why fire is contacted at salvation but there is a protocol for retaining it in Matthew 3 11 he said I baptize you with water unto repentance he said but he that cometh after me is mightier than I he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire Matthew 3 11 so you contact fire at new birth but you see to sustain fire or to rekindle fire there's a protocol and I'll give you five of them now so that you know when genuine fire is born in your life number one how do you rekindle fire after you have been born again you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost the fire is there how do you sustain it or maybe you lost it how do you rekindle it there is a way number one is through encounters with the Rema world the reason you came for this conference is not because of all the message I'm preaching here you may not need 90% of what I'm saying but you are looking for one word that will ignite you this is why we listen to messages we attend revival meetings hoping that the Rema world will come that is the word that rekindles fire and if you are on fire it is the continuous feeding on such words that keeps the fire burning. Fire that is not emotional is born by the Rema word. Look at what the Bible said. Jeremiah 23 verse 29. It says, it's not my word like fire declares the Lord. So the Rema word is a flame. And Isaiah said, Jeremiah now, 20 verse 9. He said, I did not want to talk about it. He said, but that word was shot up like fire in my bones. So when the Rema word that is fire hits you, it keeps burning on your inside. So those who are genuinely on fire, they don't ride on emotion. They ride on the revelations that are in their spirit. If your fire is emotion, it will quench even when there is no attack. But so long as it's a word burning in your spirit, it will drive you to eternity. I'm telling you, many people say they're on fire, but there's no word pushing them. When you ask the fathers of old, every face of their lives, they will tell you what God told them. That's why after 30 years, they are still burning. Because that word can't quench. When God speaks, his word is eternal. So it burns eternally. If you are looking for fire, look for words. You can meditate. You can listen to an exhortation. You can search it in a book. But look for it. Isaiah 34, 16, it says, Search ye out of the book of the law and read. So there's a difference between reading and searching. While you are reading, you are searching for the rema. And sometimes you will read for two hours. One verse will hit you. And it will change your life. Many years ago, I was going down in intensity. And I was listening to Bishop David Oedeko. And he said, Isaiah 33 verse 6 wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times wow the thing hit me from nowhere there was a passion to search God I went I hit the library started reading and eating like a vampire just because there, there was the way that knowledge hit me it was the Rema word ten people may hear that message it may not bless them but one word came for me that's what happened to Joseph. He said, until the time that his word came. So everybody who is on fire is on a constant search for word. So even when you are praying, you are not distracting yourself. You want to hear what he has to say. Because prayer does not end with you talking to God. 
Prayer, prayer is completed when God talks to you. But unfortunately, most of us are distracted on the altar because somebody is looking at you. You want them to know that you don't get tired for five hours. So the reason you are trekking like this is because your, your whole attention is on that person. He must see me walk for five hours. Or God, if your knee is paining you, sit down somewhere so that you concentrate on God. You don't win trophies by trekking for five hours. Focus. He said, Jeremiah 33 verse 3, ask of me, I will answer. And then I will show you. I will show you. Everybody that received from his realm caught fire. But we are a generation that are not receiving the realm award. Even when we are reading, we are not focused. The guy is reading and checking WhatsApp. He reads two verses. He responds to three messages. There is no connect for the word to come. And the word of God comes. The word comes. It comes to you. When you are breaking frequency, it can't come. He is worshipping and watching a movie. So there is no connection. If you know that Rema brings fire, then you shut out every distraction. That's why when the fathers pray, they close their eyes. It's not a law that you should close your eyes. But they know that they require focus to receive what's coming from heaven. But today we are praying and looking at the cameraman. When he's turning in our direction, here, here, here. Are you a hunter? Are you a farmer? If God was doing that with you, continue. But if it is the camera, you are out of the prayer room. The rama, and trust me, when one word comes, oh, one word, one word, one word can change your life forever. One word can change your life. When God's servant spoke about Anakazu, most of you have heard it before, but there was a way it came. When it comes at your frequency, it can change your life. Anybody you see on fire has caught words in the spirit. The rama word is what produces fire. Number two, what puts fire on a man and what keeps that fire burning is a disposition of sacrifice. Selfish people can't be on fire for long because the fire necessitates that you keep giving out. That's why God is sensitive to set his fire only on the sacrifice. Leviticus 9, 22 to 24. When the sacrifice hit the altar, the fire must appear. And so the Bible tells us to present our bodies as living sacrifices. So anybody who will sustain fire must have a disposition of sacrifice. The day you become self-centered, your fire begins to die. I'm telling you. These things I'm showing you, they are eternal truths. The Bible said in Leviticus 6, 12, the fire on the altar must not be put out. He said the priest must put wood on it every morning. That's the Rema word. And the Bible said when the offering hit the altar, the fire consumed it. Leviticus 9, 22 to 24. So fire responds to the Rema word and it responds to the sacrifice. We are looking for fire, but we are not willing to be sacrificial. Even those looking for an anointing is so that they can prove a point to somebody. Also that their family can become better. God has an agenda. And no selfish man can power it. So if it's God's fire you are looking for, you must sustain the disposition of sacrifice. Number three, how do you receive and sustain fire? It's by fanning to flame the measure you have. Because fire is designed to diminish if it is not sustained. That's why he said the priest must put wood every morning. Leviticus 6, 12, and 13. So a fire not sustained is a fire that will go out. He said, where no wood is, there the fire goes out. This commandment, give ID, son Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 6, that you fan to flame. So you want your fire to keep burning, you fan it. And only you know what stirs your fire. I can't specify what quickens fire for you. For me, fasting provokes my fire. Worship provokes my fire. Prayer provokes my fire. Generosity provokes my fire. So I live my life functioning like that. Those who are around me will tell you, when you come to my place, there is constant music flowing. I have many playlists. They are floating lists. Some I call them floating. So when I enter the thing, I'm just gliding. 
Sometimes you are listening, you are weeping. You are weeping and you break into tongues. I know it. That's how I keep my fire. Once in a while, I lock myself away. Even light becomes too noisy. I off everywhere, it's dark. And I cover my face on the ground. I commune, fire comes. A point comes when, as you journey, your body will start vibrating. I'm telling you, while you are there, your stomach will start moving as if you are connected to something. And you can't hold yourself. See, these things are real. Sometimes, the way my fire is dead, I just watch people walking in the supernatural. I'm playing Pastor Chris. I'm playing A.A. Allen. I'm playing ancient guys. And they are walking miracles. As I'm seeing it, I'm walking Benny Hinn's meeting. And as miracles are happening, as he's worshipping, I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. I break into tongues. See, a point comes. My whole body, I can't even hold myself. Something is happening to me. And you can sense the water bubbling from the ankle to the knee, to the waist, to the neck. I know what keeps me on fire. This is why you must become a student of the spirit to sustain fire. There are some of you here, the only thing that keeps you on fire is to listen to another person pray. So you load his tongues and you are hearing. And as he's praying in tongues, praying in tongues, some of the tongues will jack you, you will join. If you want to sustain fire, you must commit yourself to that protocol. There is a protocol. Number four, how do you keep your fire? Is by coming into the community and the assembly of the brethren. In Hebrews 10, 24, the Bible says we should spur ourselves. We should provoke ourselves into love. The passions of the spirit. He said, don't be like others that despise the gathering of the brethren. There's a move today on the internet that church is not necessary. And you think they are helping you. They say, don't go to church. All these pastors want to take your money. How much have you given since you gave your heart to Christ? You, and people listen to such garbage. Church that existed before you were born. And you think they are working for Jesus. Imagine somebody comes and starts tell, talking against Apostle Femi Lazarus' wife. Say, don't go near her. Don't go near that woman. Do you know her? And you think he will endorse you. The church is the bride of Christ. When you attack the church, you are not attacking the pastor. You are attacking Jesus. When Paul was attacking the church, Jesus didn't say, why are you attacking the church in Jerusalem? He said, so, so, why persecutest thou me? I know there are wolves in sheep clothing in church, but church is church. He said, don't be like those who despise the gathering of the brethren. Ask yourself, the first time the Holy Ghost came, did he meet them as individuals? He said, they were together in one accord. Then the Holy Ghost came. So when we gather together, it's a place of the stirring of fire. Somebody worships, something hits you. Somebody leads a prayer, something hits you. Somebody preaches, something hits you. Somebody manifests God, something hits you. And we are sharpening ourselves. Iron, sharpened iron. As a man, the countenance of his friend. If you want to remain on fire, these things, you will sentence yourself to doing them for the rest of your life. The fellowship of the brethren. The fanning to flame of the gift of God that is in you. The continuous receipt of the Rema word. The, pos the positioning of the heart sacrificially. And then number five is continuous service. The Bible said in Romans 12, 11, Be fervent in spirit. How? Serving the Lord. Those of you who got offended and said they spoke to me anyhow in the choir and left. After two years, if you are still on fire, I'm not called. I've never seen a Christian that left the body of believers and remained on fire after two years. No matter how fireful you are, when a wood is separated from the bunch, it will quench. You are vulnerable standing alone. Any Satan that told you to leave service in God's house because you were hot, that Satan buried you. The church is like a dry cleaning press. There are washed and ironed clothes and there are dirty clothes that just arrived. As we are seated here, sir, there are those who murdered somebody this night and ran into this meeting. Somebody fornicated and came here this night. 
He doesn't even know what we are talking about. He just entered. So it's not everybody who is in church that is a son. So if you are offended because of somebody, you didn't go because of Jesus. I told myself many years ago, nobody can provoke me out of my father's house. I have equal right in the city, in the, in the house with him. Because if you stop serving, you lose your fervency. Be fervent in spirit. How? Serving the Lord. This is why you shouldn't be motivated to serve. Look for a place to serve. If there's no place, find one place. Plunge yourself there. You are trying to retain your fire. The day you stop serving, you will discover that demons can heap on you. The, even the lioness that is the best hunter in the forest, he goes in packs. If he separates itself, the hyenas can kill it. Because 30 of them will come on one. No matter how strong they will devour you. This is why you must keep serving if you want fire. Most of us have been hot. We went to God. We were healed. We came back serving. That's why we are here today. You can't retain fire without serving. And finally, to be on fire, you must rely on the Holy Ghost. Galatians 5.16, he said, if you walk in the Spirit, he said, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. This fire can be retained. When God's servant said, the fire that does not quench, it was not a cliche. It's a reality that is possible. And I came tonight to show you how to sustain that reality. If you want to have fire, you must receive Jesus. If you don't receive Jesus, you can never be on fire unless it's a strange fire. And when you receive Jesus, if you want to sustain the fire, hear me, there are many young people here. I'm telling you things that will impact your life for the next 50 years. Don't take it for granted. I've received a little help from God. I can tell you some things. If you want to retain the fire of God, you must pay the price through consecration to keep fanning it to flame. You want to maintain the fire of God, you must walk in the community of believers. No isolated Christian is on fire. Forget what they are telling you. They are talking from bitterness. Check them, you will know. Because they are angry with church. They are looking for pastors to attack, to have gratification. They don't love the church. No isolated Christian can tell you it's on fire. It's a lie. Because one of the expressions of fire is love. You can't be on fire and be alone. It's impossible. Stay in the community of believers. Maintain service. Rely on the Holy Ghost. Keep receiving the Rema word. And you'll see the way your fire will burn. And when your fire burns, all the benefits earlier outlined, you will find yourself manifesting it. And you manifest it and manifest it. And manifest it and manifest it. Because the part of the just man is as a shiny light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. In another three minutes, I want us to rise. We will worship God. And as we are worshiping God, we will ask for a word from the Spirit. Let God speak to your heart tonight. And see if what you carry will go down. I can stare myself and provoke you. But I want you to walk what I've shown you. As we worship God in one minute, please hear me. Disconnect from everybody. Face the Lord Jesus. And tell yourself, Holy Ghost, I rely on you. Carry me. Lord, speak to me tonight. Let God give you one word. And if your generation don't come chasing you in three months, I don't know what I'm talking about. Can we have Moses Akko? Lead us in worship. Just three minutes.
declaration here. Some of you have never caught fire before because you have never received Jesus. I told you the key and the gateway to fire is to be baptized by the Spirit into Christ. You are listening to me now. You thought we were on fire, but now you discover you are not. This is your opportunity. You want to make Jesus your Lord so that you can receive that baptism. Lift your right hand. I'm starting with you now. Lift your right hand. Inside, outside. Lift your right hand. Those of you inside, come to the altar now. Just come to me here. You have never received Jesus. You have no business with fire, sir. Respectfully speaking. Please come. Come. Those are the overflows. Do we have space in, the, in front of the overflow? Okay, those are the overflow. If you are coming, come inside here. Come into the building. Come to the building. From left and right, come inside. If we need a generation to carry the genuity, we must show them from the scripture. No matter whatever may come my way, I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow, I'll follow. no matter, no matter what is the last Jesus. into your life and rekindles the fire and kindles the fire say dear heavenly father i believe with all my heart that jesus is your son i believe he died for my sins and on the third day he rose from the dead for my justification tonight i confess this same jesus as my Lord and my Savior I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive the gift of the Holy Ghost I receive the gift of righteousness I am born again and so I receive of the fire of God I receive of the fire of God from today I manifest God father in the name of Jesus we decree that it is so and it is established concerning them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let the hand of God be upon you and may he keep you all the days of your life in Jesus in precious Jesus. name